In the fall, Robert brought home another pet, Kulak, an Alaskan Malamute puppy, became a part of our family. He was playful and full of life, as most puppies are, and soon he was the master of the yard. He tried to play with the cats, but they didn't like his rough and tumble manner. Before long, he found out that the cats would scamper in fright if he ran toward them growling <clears throat> and baring his teeth. How he seemed to enjoy making the cats scatter. That winter was unusually cold, so Roxy spent many days and nights sleeping inside her cozy cottage. Then, one Sunday, a warm wind, known as a Chinook by the people in the Northwest, came sweeping in from the Pacific Ocean over the Rockies and across the rolling plains of eastern Montana. Quickly, the temperature rose above freezing, and the snow began to melt. Melt. The balmy air roused Roxy. She poked her head through her doorway and sniffed the breeze. Finally, full wake, she crawled out of her yard and began poking around for something to eat. Kulak, always on the lookout for some new adventure, noticed movement inside Roxy's pen. Almost at the same instant, Roxy saw this new animal in the yard. Kulak, barking furiously, dashed through the wet, melting snow to find out about the stranger inside the pen. Roxy waddled to the fence and stood on her hind legs to get a better view of Kulak. At the sight of this strange little animal standing up against the wire, Kulak skidded to a stop. The two animals stared at each other for a few seconds, each one trying to decide what to do next. Roxy dropped on all fours and tried to poke her nose through the chicken wire fence for a better smell of the big puppy. Kulak danced to one side and gave a soft woof, probably thinking he had found another puppy to play with. Robert had gone to the window to see what had caused Kulak to bark. He watched the two pets trying to get acquainted, then he decided to help them. He jerked on a pair of overshoes, grabbed a leash, and ran out into the yard. He called to Kulak, and the two animals looked in his direction. Robert quickly snapped the leash on Kulak's collar and unhooked the gate of Roxy's pen. He then pulled Kulak back a few steps to see what Roxy would do. Roxy cautiously crept to the gate and stepped outside. There she paused and stared at the strange animal and sniffed his scent with her twitching nose. Robert allowed Kulak to move one step closer to Roxy. The raccoon reared up on her hind legs again. Kulak barked, woof, woof. Roxy, back on all fours, took a few short steps towards Kulak. Robert allowed Kulak to move forward again. Roxy stood still as Kulak strained against the leash until his nose touched hers. Both animals quivered with excitement. After all, neither one had seen such another animal before. Since they didn't know how they were supposed to be enemies, they became friends at once. Robert reached down and unsnapped the leash from Kulak's collar, and the two young pets began to get acquainted, began to get acquainted game in a frenzy of delight. They chased each other around the yard, rolling and tumbling in the wet snow. Pausing to catch their breath, they sat and looked at each other until one of them made a charge toward the other. Then they dashed off again. Time after time, Kulak opened his big mouth and grabbed tiny Roxy. At first, Robert thought Kulak would kill Roxy because it looked as if he had the whole raccoon in his mouth. But they were just plain. The next thing Robert knew, Roxy was chasing Kulak. After a few minutes of this frantic play, 
Roxy dashed inside her cage. Robert called out sharply, Kulak! And the big puppy stopped outside the gate. The friendly game was over. Robert fastened the gate. During the rest of the winter, whenever the weather warmed up enough to awaken Roxy, Robert opened the pen. Kulak and Roxy had several good times together, although never again was such frenzy as on their first encounter. Everything seemed to be ideal on the Uncell Ranch, but time has a way of changing things.